So some of you may remember that I've done a couple of videos where I have given instruction on tutorials and whatnot for Adobe InDesign and other places that are Adobe products. And some of you may also remember that I've completely abandoned Adobe since then and I've switched over 100% to Affinity. For a variety of reasons, I jumped ship, I bounced, I got the hell out. Recently though, Adobe has said, hey, we want you back with a 20% off coupon. I'm not trying to hear that. I got a new boo, and that new boo is Affinity. Let's go. What's going on everybody? I'm Dave Connery. I'm an artist designer based in Southern California, and today what I'm going to talk to you about is Affinity Photo and why I love it so much. Specifically, I'm gonna give you 10 things that I love about Affinity Photo that I believe they do a better job at than Photoshop. Blasphemy, heresy, Dave. Look, here's the thing. I'm not discounting Photoshop. I think Photoshop is a fantastic program. If somebody gave me Photoshop for free, I'd probably still use it. But it's not free and it's not even cheap. And so I figured, well, let's talk about some of the things that Affinity Photo does well that a Photoshop kind of doesn't do always well. And uh, these are the 10 things. Number one is the crossover from Affinity Designer over to Affinity Photo. This is probably something that works maybe in Adobe Illustrator over to Adobe Photoshop to some degree, but the fluidity of this, and I think that's because of the nature of Affinity Designer as a program in itself. We're not talking about that program today. We're talking about the photo. The fact that I can get a file that I created in Affinity Designer and bring it over to Affinity Photo just like that and have all the layers show up. Let's take this image right here, for example. I created this simple kind of rough Argyle type pattern as something I wanted to do for fun, and I did it in Affinity Designer. And then I figured I wanted to change the coloration of everything, but I already had Affinity Photo up, so I figured, well, let's open it there. In fact, I think I opened it up by accident and thought, oh, well, I'm gonna have to close it and then bring it back into Affinity Designer and fix it. But I brought it into Affinity Photo and it already had all of the layers already in place like I didn't have to worry about trying to find my way through this to navigate around a flattened image that might have happened if I brought something from Adobe Illustrator into Adobe Photoshop. Number two, since we're already down here in the palettes, let's go over here to the adjustment palette. This is something that I absolutely love. Just the fact that from a usability standpoint, the adjustments are down here in a palette right close next to my layers so that I can immediately apply something to something else. Of course, Photoshop does have the adjustments, but you have to go up to file, you have to go to the, the adjustment layers and all that stuff. It's just those few extra steps that I get to save in Affinity Photo that make me work a little bit harder in Adobe Photoshop. Number three, same thing goes for the effects palette. Not terribly difficult in Photoshop, but it's like these extra clicks that you have to make to get there. The nature of the effects palette in Adobe Photoshop is a little bit clunky, at least in comparison to how it works here in Affinity Photo. Like if I want to immediately just add a Gaussian blur to something, which is something you don't necessarily get in the uh, effects palette in Photoshop, but just the fact that I can go in here, click Gaussian blur or click uh, outer glow, inner glow, outer 3D, I can apply these on the fly without having to go through that secondary palette and without having to figure out, oh, did it work? Did it not work? Can I make the adjustment? It's just easier in Affinity Photo. Number four is the type tool, specifically the fact that I can click in here once I'm on the type tool and I can drag and I can see exactly what size type I want to bring in right out of the gate instead of having to place my type cursor, type something out, and it automatically populating lorem ipsum. I know that that's something you can probably take away in Photoshop, but it still happens and it annoys me. But this way I can see exactly how big I want my type to be. Number five is the stock image palette, and that's this one right over here. You go to stock, and you type in, you can choose Unsplash and Pexels or Pixabay, and if you're not familiar, these are all different websites where you can pull royalty-free images that you don't need to pay for and you don't necessarily need to give credit for you can and maybe you should but you don't necessarily have to so it's like this real high quality imagery that you can pull from uh, i usually just stick with unsplash but the others work just fine too you type in whatever it is let's say uh dogs and then all of a sudden you just get this palette of all these dog images that you can just click and drag and bring it right in to your image just like that. That is quite possibly the coolest thing ever. Now, of course, Adobe has their stock that you pay extra for, but why not have this available on the fly? Yes, I can go to Unsplash and get this imagery for myself if I'm in Photoshop, 
but this way, I don't have to go there. It's again, it's a usability standpoint, and I can get this done like this. Look at me split. Number six might be one of my most favorite of all because one of the things as a designer that I like to incorporate into quite a bit of my design elements is a halftone filter. If you've ever done a halftone filterization on anything in Photoshop, you know how much of a pain in the A it is. It is incredibly arduous and difficult and you just like, hey, let's try it once. I, oh, that didn't work. Let's go back and do it again. Let's go back and do it again. Let's go, got to convert back to black and white. Got to go back to, it's, it's a mess in Photoshop. Not in Infinity Photo because all I got to do is select my image or whatever it is I want to do this to. Go to the filters, color filter, down here to half tone and it immediately starts rendering. Now I can choose monochrome, or uh, four color process, or lines, or cir circular. I can go back here to the monotone one, and uh, or monochrome, and select round if I want. I can choose my cell size. I can move the screen angle to make it more interesting. I can do a lot of interesting things right here out of this palette. And just like that, it's done. I got it done right there on the actual image that I was creating instead of having to create a separate image and do it's it's a mess in Photoshop. It's great in here. Number seven is the threshold adjustment tool, palette, whatever. I, I the fact that it's right here and they give you a couple of like favor light, favor dark, you can mess with it a little bit, you can make these little adjustments, you can do your blend mode right there on the spot. You can do like it's just I use the threshold a lot. It, you know, it, it's just, it's a fun tool for me. It's part of this the, kind of the grittiness that I put into my design work. And so to have it right there and my adjustments, it's in my layer palette, ready for me to use, to move around. I can turn it into a mask. I do all kinds of crazy things with it. Or I can uh, merge it right to the image below it pretty simply. Number eight is something that Photoshop does, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't do it quite as well as Affinity Photo. And that's really simple sampling colors. If I want to create a selection around a particular color, let's go here to select sample color and I, it's already selected the whole thing. I can click in these different areas like this. Like let's say I just want to collect the, let's say I just want to do all the black in this cute little guy's face. And then I want to make some adjustments to it and you know, I, 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 I can make that and then I hit the apply and then it gives me a selection of the thing that I want to make. And let's just say I wanted to, I don't know, fill a new layer with uh, a weird purple color and I fill with primary color. Just I'm doing this really quickly and uh, it's it selected more that it, this photo was weird. But the fact that I can go into select sample color and just uh, make the little tiny little adjustments to get the exact color reach that I want to. Let's say I wanted to separate the black from a black and white image or yeah, like select all of the cyan out of a particularly uh, mostly magenta, image. I don't know. It just makes it easier and it's better in Affinity Photo than it is Adobe Photoshop. Sidebar, I might be saying Adobe Photo and uh, Affinity Photoshop, I might be interchanging those. <laughs> it's just because the names are so similar. It's a little bit difficult, my brain can't process. Bear with me. I mean Adobe Photoshop, I mean Affinity Photo. You get what I'm saying. Number nine is quite possibly one of the coolest things ever. And it's something Photoshop can't even grasp. They can't even wrap their heads around this. In fact, it's possible that Adobe Illustrator can't even figure this out. And that is very simple, the shapes tools. You go here to the tool palette and it's like uh, just all of these crazy different shapes just ready for you to use right out of the gate. And you would think like, oh, okay, I get a heart and then I place a heart and that's it. But no, you can do, even still, after you've already made it, you can make these adjustments to the thing by itself. You can make all kinds of crazy things happen. You get to make these shapes the way you want them and they're already readily available to you as opposed to like having to go over to Illustrator, make your triangle, make your rectangle so that you can get an arrow. It's just easier here. Am I getting that point across? Number 10 is also in the tools palette and that's the mesh warp. Photoshop's got mesh warp, but not in the tools palette, not like this. Not where I can go and I can drag this out and I have these arms that I can do all this stuff like this right out of the gate. Like, it's, I don't use it a lot, but I use it enough that it's like, it's right there. It's so readily available and easy. Yeah, I, I love it, I love it. Dave, if you love it so much, you should probably marry it. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I will propose to the people at Serif who create Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher because I love it that much. Hey, bonus, bonus 
to all of this, and it's something I've already mentioned. The A plus number one bonus item added to this list of 10, which makes it a whopping 11.7075. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Bonus item is the cost. Okay, I just had to double check, make sure I wasn't gonna be made a liar. But yes, every single one of their programs, Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher, you can get all three. If you're that into it, you can get all three for 75 bucks. And that's a limited time offer. I don't know how long that limited, and I'm not, I'm not paid by them. I'm not endorsed by them. They're not, I'm not getting anything from Affinity. I had to pay full price. I'm telling you, now's the time so you can get a better deal than I did. Even if you miss this 50% off, even if you come back to this and they go back right up to the 100% uh, price where it's $50 per program, at $150 for all three of those programs, that's a smoking deal compared to anything Adobe's got out there. So the cost is really the biggest, most brilliant benefit to this. They're making high quality programs for far, 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 far less money than anybody else. And I guarantee you Adobe is running scared. Maybe they're not running scared, but they're definitely a little bit worried because Affinity is not messing around. But is it perfect? Are these apps perfect? Not by a long shot. What I plan on doing next week is I'm gonna break down Affinity Photo and all of the things that I don't like about it. There are some things that get me a little peeved, a little bit upset, but I still love the program. So we'll talk about that next time. In the meantime, I highly recommend you go check out Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. In fact, I think you can even get a free trial. I mean, what, what is there to lose? I'll put links in the description. Again, not sponsored, not affiliated. Maybe I should be affiliated. Maybe they should be throwing me some. Hey, Sarah, if you're paying attention and you want to throw me a few bucks for this, I'd be okay with that. All right, kids, that's it. I'm going to get out of here. But before I go, do me a favor. Answer me this one question. Have you switched over from Adobe to some other program like Affinity? And if so, which ones? And why did you do that? If you haven't done so, what are your uh, reservations in regards to that? Why haven't you done so or if you just haven't even looked at it? I'd really like to know what you think about the difference between these two programs if you try them anyway. So go ahead and make a comment below and if you haven't done so already make sure you hit the like button on this video and if you haven't done so already make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't ever miss any things because like I said I'm gonna do other videos about this stuff soon. And if you've subscribed but you haven't hit that little bell well then do the, the it's right there because you never want to miss out on anything that I'm putting out because like I said I got the other videos coming out soon and you don't want to miss you don't want to miss what I've got to say about them because we've been talking about these things a lot and I'm also going to start showing you all of the ways that I'm using these programs in new and inventive ways I don't know how inventive they are but they're inventive to me because I haven't used them before all right I'm out folks remember be good today be even better tomorrow see ya